How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to Two Left Thumbs. The video I was working on was taking longer than planned. I haven't done a developer commentary in a while. Madness Day is coming up in just under a month here. So hey, I thought this would be a good chance to show off my game from five years ago, Madness Throne. This is potentially the game I'm most proud of, of, of anything I've worked on, and it's technically incomplete, which is a little bit unfortunate. Literally one week before Madness Day 2016, I thought, I want to make a Madness fan game. What immediately came to mind, just stylistically, a game I like, a game that's hyper-violent, I wanted to make Hotline Miami meets Madness. I got to work drawing some of those assets, playing around with that top-down, like, visual perspective, very difficult to work in, hard, hard to communicate, like the goggles of Hank and, and different components like that. Did not make it very far before I thought, I don't have time to learn how to program this entire game and also do all the art. It's a week away. I reached out to Guy Unger, who had several games at that point that I was very impressed with. He got back to me right away. He said, sure, let's game jam this. Let's like commit three days over the weekend to it and let's make this happen. I said, great, I, I've barely gotten started, here's what I have if you want to start integrating it. He spent all of, I don't know, five minutes on that and came back to me with the idea, wouldn't it be more fun to maybe do like a roguelike? Nuclear Throne's a great game and it blew me away. I play so many roguelikes, I'm such a huge fan, I, I love Nuclear Throne, I don't know why that didn't come to mind at all. Dumped everything, scrap it, forget it, we're making our version of Nuclear Throne. I wish I had the different builds that Guy was able to make in hours and then what it looked like after a day and two days. This guy is so efficient, he works so fast, it's insane. We are communicating through Skype. <laughs> Discord was like barely a thing five years ago, I think, and so all that's gone. I maybe if I if I have anything that I'm gonna be showing it on screen right now. If not, I couldn't dig up any of it, and that'll that's gonna be so disappointing to me to think that those prototypes are gone because it was insane how quickly he started pulling it together. At a minimum, I at least have this, which was the version that was submitted on Madness Day itself. It won Daily Fifth which was pretty damn exciting, considering like the state the game was in. There's like a fair amount of lag to it, but you have the core concept. You have your little grunt character who can run around, shoot the, the other grunts on screen. They can shoot back at you. We found some killer tracks to use to kind of really sell the game. I love seeing the fact that like there wasn't even art for the fists necessarily. And so like you kind of just have these goofy little circles that were drawn in so like <laughs> obviously last minute and just kind of making do there's different doors i'm pretty sure it's using the sound effects straight from the game which is a lot of fun it, it like there's glitchiness going on where you immediately drop the weapon you would have picked up on the previous level so you don't actually get to keep the shotgun it's funny i've played through this so many times that i kind of like instinctively remember the map layouts, you would see your, your ammo is directly on top of your little target icon doodad. I don't know what it's called, but you can see like 12, 12 bullets left. So it helps you keep track of that. I love the chunkiness of it. I love the way things bounce around the screen. The, there's graphical glitches going on that are ridiculous to me. Like you can see those little white uh, stray pixels along the different heads of these characters. So that's obviously not complete. Like there's a lot of lot of jank going on. But it's like the fact that the characters actually can like spin in 360. There's explosive things. There's a couple different guns and all that. This came together so quickly it doesn't even make sense. So that's that's the first iteration of the game. It's essentially what the final version ended up being, but there's like a few stray elements that maybe aren't fully polished. One thing I've always been bad at and always struggle with is making tile sets for games. Like, I I don't know if I've ever been happy in my life with like a tile set I drew. And <laughs> I tweaked this one a lot. Oh, he's on, a, he's on an upper level there. That's cool too. <laughs> and so like, working in an entirely grayscale, that's fantastic. 
because you don't have to worry that much about the tile sets looking that great because it's like a very basic art style as is. The flamethrower art isn't finished either, but having a flamethrower is very fun. And like, obviously it's five years later and this game still exists as a demo. Demo on Newgrounds? No, we have like never, within a week or two of Madness Day, so early October 2016, was like the last time we ever talked about this game at all. It was just very clear. We barely had the time to put together... It, it loops back around. We're in that first level again now. We barely had time to make the game that we did make, and just neither of us really had the time to really sink our teeth into it and, and improve the game to the point we originally had in mind. Obviously, my love of roguelikes has persisted. Even getting more specific, browser-based roguelikes. That was how I first got involved with Dead Estate, a horror-themed top-down roguelike shooter developed by the Milk Bar lads over on Newgrounds. Two Left Thumbs came on as a publisher. I'm helping these guys take their game to the next level, and it's releasing on Steam this October. It actually has a lot of the same DNA as Madness Throne, taking its own inspirations from elsewhere in the genre, as well as innovating along the way. It's shaped up to be such an amazing game, and in a lot of ways is what I hoped Madness Throne could be. I'll have links in the description and a pinned comment. Go and wishlist Dead Estate. It's coming out so soon, I'm so excited for that. Now we can talk more about my semi-failed roguelike. Before I show you the, the current iteration of it, how it has existed for the last five years, I do want to share that literally one year later, someone else made Madness Nevada Hotline. So someone else realized the, the connectedness of the style of gameplay, of like storming a building, hyper-violence, makes perfect sense for a madness game. I had nothing to do with this game, I just wanted to share it because it came from io3, who way back in the day made the Stickman Sam series, which I really enjoyed. I thought it was such a fun series and I would love to do like a flashlight on either that series or io3 as a whole because they had a lot of very creative games, very unique things that you didn't really see anywhere else. So yeah, if you want to play a madness style hotline Miami game, that exists. <laughs> you can go check that out now. We submitted that other build so late in the day. You know, we actually posted specific updates in like the author comment section on Newgrounds. So the day after we added a tiny amount of stuff, like a day after that, fixed a few bugs. And about two days after that, added a level creator that people never really took full advantage of, but it's cool that it exists in the game to give it some longevity. So yeah, <laughs> unfinished test version. A, a more complete tile set, something that isn't just entirely like that really basic blankness. So in this first area here, you can see it's tracking your different ammo types. You have an actual Hank to play as, and you have actual fists to punch with, which uh, again, I'm seeing stray white pixels on those. But I like the idea of really basic fists, but giving them big meaty fists like projectiles when you actually do a punch. There's like a, a, a walk cycle that I think turned out relatively well. So this first area is, you know, like outside of the building. You're, you're in Nevada and then you storm your way into the building, which is like meant to be classic. Exactly how, how it should feel in a madness game. You can see a little bit of an error there. It's like a grunt body, but when he dies, he suddenly has Hank's body. I think that happens literally with every single one of these guys. I don't remember, honestly. There's a, a Hell's Pack in case you're injured. I don't remember if every level is this zoomed in. I think that was us trying to add some like variety to things. So it starts super zoomed in, at least. The camera changes. There you go. We're zoomed back out a little bit. Same level layout, though. We we pulled together these levels in so little time. Like, it's absurd <laughs> how little time was spent on the level design. I just saw a body float away on the left-hand side of the screen there. The game might actually run smoother in this version, which that's Guy building his engine in like a day and then tweaking it like hourly essentially is how efficient that guy is at what he does. Oh, something didn't I, I thought that was me for a second there. It loaded fine. It's no no errors, nothing to nothing to worry about. Plenty of health uh, opportunities. We I this might be an entirely different level as well. 
you know, and these were made using the level designer, which is fun. At least these ones were. I don't know if the initial ones were. We have like an agent rather than just the grunt style. This like heavy gun that does nowhere near the amount of damage that it really feels like it should. Fighting these little grunts, I feel like it should probably be like a one shot kill. You know. That's how it goes. We, for years, have gotten, like, positive feedback on this game of people being, like, really excited with it and asking us where the full version is. And honestly, it's just, like, never really going to happen, which is maybe a shame. The zombies come in, as, as I intend to show. Ooh, this guy hidden in there. I We had some pretty... Ma there's uh, lots of guys stuck in there. Actual flames to shoot, which look kind of dope, honestly. We had big plans for this game, and it would have had a full story arc and like different levels the way you'd advance through, like the desert and then the sewers and things and nuclear throne. Like we, that was part of the vision we had in mind. The game loops loops back around on itself, same as it did before. So it's like quite incomplete. But we want to have different areas. We want to have different bosses, and then the zombies get introduced specifically at the same time that, like, Jeebus gets introduced, and, like, we want to stay true to madness in that, like, very specific way, and just didn't have the time. But I can show crazy amounts of behind-the-scenes stuff that I've been sitting on for five years that's never really seen the light of day, and I'm very excited to show some of the ideas we had in mind for this game. I still think, five years later, this is the most in the zone I've ever been working on a project. I was pumping out assets, like, 12 hours a day, at, like, a quality I don't know if I had ever achieved before. I was happy with literally all of it, and I just kept busting it out. And I, like, for the first time ever, I outpaced the programmer. Always when I work on projects, these programmers are left waiting on my art, and this was, like, one time where I got ahead probably too far ahead. So many of these little pieces are going to be so shrunk down and so tiny because they're made like literally pixel by pixel. I was using graphic scale, so whatever this is, 16 by 16, I was actually individually placing pic pixels, and so everything is going to look so preposterously tiny. You can see those stray whites, which are hard to notice in graphic scale, but then you export the PNG and it's so obvious, it's painful. So each head actually only has, I think, four frames, which is really interesting to notice or to, to like think about. So there's one looking slightly to the side, then looking straight sideways, then slightly to the side and behind, and then there's like a generic behind the head because, you know, when you can't see the face anymore, every Madness character basically looks the same other than Hank. So that 360 is really only like three individual unique frames, one generic, it, it's, it was really easy to fake that. The idle animation is only three frames long, just to give it a tiny bit of a bob. The run animation is about six frames long, a little bit more complex, but pretty easy to sell that. We had about five different ammo types. I really heavily copied Nuclear Throne for this part. I'm not familiar enough with guns myself. I had to lean so heavily on just what I was seeing in Nuclear Throne and Madness and not really adding a whole lot of my own spin to it. Pistol, shotgun, bombs, uh, flame thrower. I'm sure something in there was meant to be like rockets. Not all of them made it in. I put together this campfire, which I thought was like a really good merging of the madness style and nuclear throne. I was pretty happy with that, and that would be the respawn point. We played around with having procedurally generated levels because we wanted it to feel like nuclear throne and other roguelikes and like flash based roguelikes were not super common it all kind of started with binding the isaac but in that time not a lot of them had been made and so we had grand ideas of making that but having procedural level generation in the span of a couple days wasn't happening and that was where the level creator came about and we realized we were going to have to like hand craft these levels I created a ton of different blood splatters. I created several different dead heads, which were meant to be like the disembodied heads after the characters were killed. And we kind of had this idea that there would be some physics where heads would blow off sometimes or be tossed upwards in the air and it would be 
gory and over the top and absurd. And instead, every single character dies with Hank's body, or like the agent body, whichever it is, and it's incorrect, and it's only ever the one type of deadhead graphics. So that really, really didn't come together the way it was supposed to. That first level basically would have been blowing through a first first section i don't know first area and maybe there's levels within that the first area would have been blowing your, your way through grunts eventually building your way up to fighting the different agents pretty standard stuff tutorial essentially but like trial by fire tutorial the next area would have been agents and engineers i was really happy with how the engineering art came together and at this point in time is probably where I admit how I did the art for this because I had never done pixel art before and I super cheated. I wish I had a time lapse of myself actually doing this originally. I couldn't believe how well it worked. And I ended up getting comfortable enough with it to start freehanding some of the assets, like a decent amount of them. But how the majority of them started was ripping certain assets. Like, I kind of started doing this with the guns specifically, because I, I just couldn't quite figure out how to draw these guns. Ripping them straight from Madness games, shrinking them down to the size they would need to be, like pixel size, so that it was all compressed and kind of looks like garbage. I'm, I, I'll have video footage recreating what I'm talking about. I would import that to graphic scale, delete stray pixels, give it a black outline, and then start tweaking the details to make sure it really looked right. But just to get that initial shape, I really felt that I needed to do it that way. And even things I didn't end up ripping straight from madness, like the, the run cycles. I couldn't use those because the body shapes we ended up using are quite different from how they actually look in madness. I had to draw those myself in Flash, export them, compress them, put it in a graphic scale, and then tweak them. I could not do it directly in graphic scale. I just like couldn't wrap my head around it. Pixel art is so different and so difficult. So once you would have blasted your way through that first area, then you would have gotten to the second, like a little bit more of a experimental facility rather than just kind of like a generic building. That's where you'd be fighting agents and engineers and kind of the boss of that area would have been a full on mag agent. I have the art for that. I could entirely show it off. What exactly those attack patterns would have been, things like that had never really been figured out i was just pumping out the art and how those battles would come together could be figured out figured out after the fact you know they progressively become more damaged the more damage they are dealt we would have had like a boss bar at the bottom and uh, eventually you fell this big baddie he'd probably give you some big hardcore weapon and then you advance to the final area there was going to be three main areas this one I, I don't even know thematically what we had in mind how it was going to look it's it's hard to picture how they all every building would have been made unique in some way it might never have been the plan just because tile sets are quite difficult to draw and i wouldn't have really known how to make them stand out but here is where you would have started seeing the zombies for the first time they would start creeping their way in and the big boss at the end of that would have been jesus themselves which again i did have art for that i had him drawn in a way where he would like float kind of up at the top of whatever your boss battle arena was. He would summon zombies, he would cast spells against you, he'd fire a big pistol now and again. And same thing, he becomes progressively more damaged as you start shooting away at him <laughs> as much as possible. So through all that, this game went from being Madness Hotline Miami to a procedurally generated roguelike Madness Throne which then got reduced down to being like a level progression that would have had a couple different boss battles, like probably just the two boss battles. But hopefully there'd be some level of randomization, like the weapons you find or, or something to encourage you to keep playing, or we were hoping people would really run wild with the level editor. You can see all the different tile pieces. There's like a fence and stairs, which are like not really drawn in pixel art. Those weren't quite done properly. Grunt, Agent, Zombie, I don't think there was anything unique about them. I don't think they were made in a way that, you know, made them distinct in, in any way whatsoever. They all played the exact same. You can, like, drag to, to place loads of tiles at once. There's uh, the, the raised components and things. Like, all of it functions the way it should, and it's very exciting. But, you know, 
it's an incomplete game, so I don't I don't really think people went too wild with it. You could have up to five different floors to it, so there was a lot of opportunity for people to do like crazy stuff with that. Yeah, you know, quick as that. Suddenly, it's like a playable thing. I think you can. I think you can tweak things, and you can like change the weapon that different enemies spawn in with. They see they always end up just having Hank's body, and they they just kind of sit next to each other in that exact same arrangement every time. So it's not random the way it was meant to be. Apparently, quite a few people have made levels for this, which is pretty cool. Question is, does it still work without Flash? I do wish there was a way to vote on different levels. That would have been cool, then you could really, like, show off. I was pretty excited to poke around with these and, and see what people had created, and I think, kind of with the death of Flash, the launching it in Newgrounds player doesn't seem to actually do anything. Like, it doesn't... There, there's the crappy thing I just put together, but I, I can't figure out how to load in the levels that other people would have made, which is such, such a shame. I want to see what people had put together here. People have obviously submitted levels since the death of Flash, so that, that portion still works, because you can build it in Newgrounds Player, save it, and it'll upload to Newgrounds. It's not set up in a way that it feels like you can load the levels back up again. So that's a shame. That's a little bit of a lost relic of this project. But in one sense, the entire game is a little bit of a lost relic. It's playable. I still think it's fun. I think it looks good. I can't believe we made it in the span of like a couple of days. But as you can see, our goals and ambitions for this project were a lot lot larger than what eventually made it into the game. I'm happy to share the behind the scenes. I've been sitting on those assets for so long, it's cool to, to pull them back out and kind of relive that a little bit. Madness Day 2021 is coming up September 22nd. Keep an eye out. I am planning to make a Madness flashlight video. I made one like years ago, but I made it in the span of like 24, 48 hours. It was like a 10 minute long video, not comprehensive at all. This time around, I'm hoping to have an interview with Crinkles, dedicate a lot more time to the fan content that people have made. I think that's gonna be really great. I'm recording this after the fact, so no face cam, but I wanted to toss in a quick reminder about Dead Estate coming out this October. Go hop over to Steam, wishlist that now. You won't regret it. In the end cards here, I'll have a link to my playlist where I have other developer commentaries of projects I've made over the years. Thank you to patrons of the channel, whose names are scrolling off to the side here. And thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.